Yeah, that's the other view. This is off the back. I came back again because we're going to have, or if you haven't seen these before, this will be your first one. This is the first part of the, the whole thing. It goes around that whole mountain back over to Walden Pond. This is an upper pond that keeps the water moving and aerated. It, fe it feeds from this pond, which normally would be about 15 foot deep, which actually comes around through the woods and is tied to this canal that comes back to here. Now the canal splits if I want to cap power over there, which I'm trying to do. Look at that. And then come around. That goes all the way around the back. But unfortunately, guess what that little flag means? So I've got to separate all that. And I'm having to watch fish and turtles and stuff die as I cut the water source off because I can't, I, I just, anyway, not wanting to take care of anymore. They're going to fill it in, do some shit with it, and I can't do anything about it. So the point is, the water is going to have to come through here now instead. And it comes through here and it feeds this canal. And that goes back. Now, where's the water come from? Some might say, well, the rain, obviously, is part of it. This is an island. Would you believe in Texas I've got 12 islands? And they're all surrounded by running water. Some are little islands and some are big islands. This is one. If the water's running, of course, and it is right now. And then the next one is where my house is, in the woods there. There wasn't woods there when I put it there, but they've grown. And this is my little space that'll be hopefully a little temple for people to come to and pray and meditate and think and wonder and try to manifest their dreams. I went from being crippled after my son passed to being as young and as healthy as I ever was in my son's age. In that little house where my little cat sits up there. Oh, there she is. Hey, little sister. Meow. Meow. She'll talk back. She's a talker. So that house right there actually goes down to the tunnel below, which is my first digging, for those of you who don't know. This is why this is the beginning of the story, even though you may be seeing it at the end. It tells you the tale of how this came to be after Adam left. And I was given a new path. It took me a while to get past having all those things that I had accumulated to give him. And I thought I'd give him to somebody else. It'd be just like a son. Not that easy. So all that water goes back there, goes behind. That's a peninsula rather than an island because one part of it you can walk across. That was the chicken coops until some boxes or something got in there and we just recently have to go rebuild the perimeter. That tree was just a little scrawny thing when I started. All Egyptian papyrus going through there. And then down here, these were donated by the Luling Railroad. And that goes down to a place known as Mud Caves. And it was also known as a hole in my heart. That was the first earth sculpture I did. Oh yeah, by the way. Hi everybody. I'm Brad Cattell. Also known as Darby. Darby Leddick. And that's my nom de plume for some of the stuff I write. And the idea behind what I write is to go ahead and try to teach people as best I can with metaphors and stories and analogies. The crystals and light and meditation and, and what we believe in, how we believe, and how we treat our vessel determines to a large degree the quality of life we have. And so if we go ahead and eliminate electromagnetic fields next to our head at night, which are in the walls, and if we go ahead and stop poisoning ourselves with all the things they put in our food, we can get healthy and young again, vital, use the sun to charge up our mitochondria with melatonin, the most powerful antioxidant you can get from the sun. I've got, my goodness, I have a turtle who's riding a... He must have just jumped off. He's riding a floating tire. I'm not sure where that went. Over there, those floating tires, that's where the water from the very front well comes from. And then it goes over here and goes through that portal and then goes down into the ponds below. And that must be bogged down a little bit because that's a little higher than I like to keep it. But I can run that up another foot. You see, I left it down. I built all this by hand in that wall and then across this. That's what used to be here. Neglected pastures on this side with a bunch of mesquite needles and bodark and cactus and everything that could stab you, sting you, bite you, poison you. It lived here. Now, you see me. You can walk through here barefoot. I can at least. And, and you can be part of nature and hear all the birds singing in the morning. And my bed is right next to where that cat is. And that fan, that fan is... All I have for electricity in the house, and because of the design of the house, even on a hot day of 108 degrees, 
I can go in here and probably lose my connection. Even if I can keep it, but it'd be very weak. And inside, I can show you on my thermostat that in the middle of the day at 107 degrees, it's only going to be, would you believe, 80 degrees inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually from England. And the way you can tell is English didn't have American doorknobs. So I had to add that on there so I could put this beautiful piece on there and have that. That's an English handle for a door. That's from India. We're not going to go very far, but let's just say uh, from China, one of my guard. You see, in China, you would have things like that as guards. It looks like my signal is okay. And that's what you grab in case the guards say, ah, problem. Once upon a time. Aztecs, right? There it is. Look at that. And a man came to visit. And while he was here, he touched that and left. Just like that. And the next morning after he'd gone, he was just here for a few moments the day before on a tour. It was on the floor, broken, mysteriously, on its own, gave up the ghost and died. This is another part of the house from India. And up above, you can see my bedroom with a floating bed. And I highly recommend everybody get your bed hanging from ropes. And a confessional next to the bed, just in case. And a Trojan horse. No, actually a Trojan ladder. For those of you who don't know, this is a Trojan ladder made for fire trucks. But when I was young, if I said I had a six-pack of cast iron Trojans leading up to my bedroom, you might get the wrong impression. So, as you can see, I'm big into stained glass. And all my windows are designed to go ahead and transform light into the different spectrums. Green being healthy, ultraviolet, crystals allowing you to go ahead and detox the environment with nothing but the air and light as it goes through. Because what it can do is it can make literally ultraviolet spectrum light and green light. That's a great chair. These are odd fellow chairs. And that's the chair my son wrote the song of Salvage and played it in long ago before he left. And this is a beautiful window from a, a Scottish designer who actually had a whole bunch of stuff in the Northeast and an institute named after him. And so on and on it goes from India, the end windows. I thought you might like a little tour while the place is clean enough to see. Bookcases and... Oh yes, and I said, generally, even though it's pretty hot outside, let's see what it says today. This, I don't like this one as much, but... Oh, heck, I'm going to read it for you. It says 78 degrees. Maybe you can see that. There you go. And that's in the middle of a very hot day without the fan even being on. And then you lay on that floating bed. If you have high-level Asperger's or um, attention deficit or anything like that, you want to get something like that. It's very, very important. So, as you look around in your life and you gather the things, here's my writing desk if I ever should be, that I get a chance to come up here and write, and then my own seating spot when I come up here. And so, for a tiny house, it's very comfortable. Of course, it's 18 and a half foot tall, but what I want you to understand is that these packages I'm offering, I know it's a long ways to get to that, but they're designed for you to make your dream happen. And not all the pieces will come from my place in the all-you-can-carry sale. But what I'm going to try to do is give you ideas that will allow you. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? And the red glass you see in the corners, that's actually a, called a flash glass. It's clear glass that's then dipped into the very expensive red glass, which is made from gold being added to the liquid molten glass. And then they take it out and they cut it back in the 1800s and make those patterns that are etched into it through the red glass. It's fascinating as we look through all the things you can capture from the back of a, a vanity and, and use to go ahead and create an incredible house. So I want to recommend to you all, don't think those ugly, toxic boxes on wheels. Please, try to go ahead and consider that if you want to go ahead and spend the time and create something beautiful, now is your chance to come in and pick some choice pieces and then use wood on your walls, not shit rock. And use beadboard. 
on your walls. I've got a bunch of that, about several thousand feet of that. That's in the specialty list. You can take some, but I got to want to save enough for everybody to have some. It makes beautiful beadboard. And then this is called bubblegum beadboard. And I have literally a square mile of this in short pieces to go ahead and make these with. And people could get that and take it with them as part of their package. This was really cool. I can't get it over right now. Um, this was actually where mine actually had, you can tell I never used this, um, beadboard. This is siding, but it's indoors. This is around the outside, metal. And so if you want to go ahead and build inexpensively, this is a gorgeous door. What's really unique is it looks like wood. See this? Can you see? Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, see all that? That's not real. That's actually painted on grain. You can see over here where it's been scratched off. Okay, and then on this side, of all things, it's a double-sided, single-sided mirror. So on the other side, you can see through. And you'll think that I am not seeing myself because it looks like a window. This is called French glue chip. And you can tell because it has the big old pieces out of it instead of American glue chip where they didn't glue the hide to the glass and put it in the sun and the hide would contract and take big leaves off. So French glue chip is much more expensive. And then of course, these red panels and cobalt, all my favorites. These two right here in purple. And this says the sun hits it. This is the colors you get cast across the room or upon your face or body. That's to the kitchen. Airflow, airflow. So. As I try to go ahead and express to some people, how do you compress a stairwell into 12 square feet where it's all usable space on your way up? I love these single poles where you don't have to have two. That's the decorative element in the middle of the house. And, and I should have made that open. That was a mistake, but it's hard to make oval windows open and close um, without leaking. Um, next time I will because the airflow is too valuable. And finally, this is uh, off of a hearse, and in the old days, you would have the hearse and the hearse lights. If you can see through there, ah yes, red side like a boat, and the other side. And this was an early hearse and had a battery pack on here and a little bulb in there. So all these pieces, even these I thought to be the ugliest things I'd ever seen in my life, and now I've got them and I'm using them. And you can tell my porch is settled because there it's separated, but these are redwood. And somebody made all those. And they don't match. That one doesn't match. It's longer over there than that one's over there. But anyway, from my porch, my friends, as it's raining, I'm going to put the phone away. I'm going to say good day. This is the beginning of this series, or the end of this series, a short trilogy on what we could do. And it's a mess over here. I hate to show it all to you. It's been years since I did it. And so many things to do. Um, please. Think of it all. Look at all that beautiful blue tile for making gardens with and making the ledges with. Think of what you can do. I've got tons of that, by the way. 32,000 square feet. So if you want to have a blue tile roof, I might throw that in as one of the packages. So you can get squares of that that originally came in 1984, cost $750 for a 10 foot by 10 foot area. And I have 32,000 10 foot by 10 foot areas in stock. 3,200, excuse me, 3,200. So why don't you take a couple of those and build a tiny house? So it takes four squares. All right, kids. I got to go again. I saw a few faces show up. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi. Hi. Oh yeah. My pleasure to have you join me, and I wish you the very best. And if you can, get your friends together, get a couple trailers, get your money pulled together, and come down and pick a load up. Because I could use the money to free it up in whatever storage space is there. If I pull this off, you've got free storage till you need it, as long as you figure out what you're going to get and pay for it. And I can tell you, whatever you want, we'll design it. Windows, doors, in their jams, trim, flooring, all that stuff. First come, first served. By the semi, if we can do it, you can make a village out of two semis. Please. Think about the possibilities. Join me.